This will be the JLH69 number 2. And they were just trifling more expensive. They were available either as a board, a kit, or a finished board. But I enjoy assembling a kit, so I bought a kit. Actually, it's two amplifiers for this price. Free shipping. What can I say? You can read it. This is the same size as my amplifier number one. 12 to 24 volts. He recommends a seller 18 volts at 1 amp. I did do actually a bill of materials, which is, I'm not sure I did that for everyone. I did a schematic and a drawing of the board. There are some notes. Let's see what this guy did differently. Uh, put a capacitor across the input. He put a variable resistor here to set the crossover point voltage, which I didn't note on the schematic. I do note it on the components layout. I'll revise this to include point X. So he uses an MPS, in this case, MPSA 56, second stage MPSA 06. I believe these are complementary PNP and PN. Sure. All of the technical specifications for these devices is in the subdirectory below. In addition to a fairly big output capacitor, it's twice as big as, as the last kit, he put a one microfarad bypass, well, capacitor in parallel with the output. Still the same 10K resistor, second time I've seen this, but not, but not on the original JLH drawings. And I think he skimped on the voltage here. Uh, I'd rather see if a 25 volt capacitor here. Anything else appears to be kosher. Oh, he does provide a variable resistor here to adjust the current. Now this guy did something different. He has screw terminals here for the input. He's got push on tab type things for the input and output. Which is different. I'm not sure it's nice. He identifies his board as a, as a zero zone, which is the seller's name, as an, and then it has an N 1969. There's also, and I noted it here, a maker's inventory number. That's probably the number of the board person. And I note that in the uh, notes on the drawing. So the, it came for two, two boards, two of everything. Um, it came with hardware for mounting the devices. Amplifier number one did not. It's got gold capacitors, which are just a change of color. And like I say, these quarter inch push on terminals with insulators and little spade terminals to be mounted on the board. Interesting. You don't see that very often. Everything else is pretty much a kit. Just what you'd find. Again, the drawings and everything are in the subdirectory below. Always check to make sure you've got the latest revision. 
And once again, I put the board marking down. In this case, I put the seller's name because the seller's name is also on the PCB. In his design bulletin, JLH mentioned that if you can measure the HFE, these transistors, put the greater one down here. I don't, I'm not sure why, but since we are building this from scratch, we get to, to measure the gain of these two transistors. And I'll put the highest gain down here. So I've got my QRP blocks with the new screws in them. Although I am only using three. Uh, resistors first. They're the, they lay closest to the board. The values are marked on the board. I guess it's this way. Now, this, this capacitor, for example, is not marked. But the resistors are marked. It's a nice board. It's nicely laid out. I think everything will be straightforward. The next time you see the board, it should be completed. This is amplifier number two. It's been assembled. There are absolutely no surprises. I did refer to these push-on tabs as quarter-inch. That's incorrect. They're three-sixteenths. The seller recommended 18 volts. So I've got an 1877. I'm not going to try to do any better than that. And one amp, I've got it at 966. We've got a little LED on this fellow. That's a 50 hertz square wave. The exact same pattern of slope, a little, a little more slope on the negative side than the positive. Looking at the uh, photograph of the oscilloscope in the original article, this is what we see, and this is very close to what the scope's showing. Now this is somewhat better than the first amplifier, which had a curve there, probably because of the larger output capacitor. Right now the input is uh, 0.65, the output is uh, almost 8 volts RMS. Let's go to 50 kilohertz. All in all, that's a little bit better square wave on the uh, compared to the first amplifier. Again, this is the input, this is the output. Leading edge is a little slow to go up. It's pretty flat and it drops very nicely. Look at a thousand hertz. That looks almost perfect. And at 10 kilohertz, that looks very, very good. Again, we're making 8 watts. The uh, input voltage to almost 1 volt. The output increases to 8 volts, which is 8 watts. What did the seller claim? He didn't claim any wattage at all. 1969. But I'm not running it nearly at what uh, Lindsay Hood would have run it. But that makes a nice 8 watts. 20 kilohertz. All in all, this looks like a pretty nice amplifier. Look at 200 hertz, and you see we're beginning to 
we're down in frequency now. It's a pretty good start, but then it doesn't make it. It's not even making it at, uh, well, that's only 198. So I'm beginning to see a little bit of rise. Looks pretty good at 700 hertz. Although looking at the original photograph of the oscilloscope, he was willing to accept this this kind of distortion. There's no heat. I could call the heat sink or the cap screw uh, 31 centigrade. I'll go ahead and pull out number three and in the next video I'll do the same thing for number three. I've updated the documents in the uh, subdirectory below down there and for documents for one and two are as free of mistakes as I can find them to be. Please, if you do note a mistake, a misspelled word, something does make sense, give me a comment. Appreciate a thumbs up and comments if you have them. Thank you.